Hi everybody and welcome to another tips and tricks video. My name is Dan Lopez and I'm the application specialist for Tecla Power Fab here at Trimble. Uh, today we're going to talk about material pricing options for estimating. Uh, there are different ways to set price to materials in EPM and I think it is very important for users to understand the hierarchy and the flexibility of these options in order to choose which one is the one that better fits your company procedures. First, let's begin with price and maintenance. Uh, you will find that under the maintenance pull down. Uh, this is a database where you can be pulling your default material prices for the estimates. Uh, some companies use more than one database and you can uh, adjust that in the pricing type maintenance. Here you can create different databases like most companies will have one for estimating that estimators make sure that they always keep updated or some other companies have one for meal orders where they have uh, a lot of uh, uh, bigger different range of sizes for the materials that they can get from meals. Uh, when you go to the warehouse, for example, which is the default database that we ship the database out, uh, you will find out that every shape and grade is there, at least the most common ones. Uh, but it's really important that you actually update this based on your company practices. Like, for example, here in HSS, if there is grades here that you don't use, it's really better to just uh, remove them from here and keep this with the standard information that you would like to use in your database. It's very important that you keep your prices updated in here and there's different ways to make that easier for you. For example, if I go right now to my beams, I can click on any of these small sizes and you can see that I have a, a $39 per hundred way price. If I go, for example, to my uh, 14 by 43 uh, pounds per foot beams, I have $44 per hundred weight. You don't have to go updating price by price, right? There's uh, different tools that can help you to make that easier, like the global edit tool where you can go and select the particular grade that you wanna adjust and then pick the range of beams that you wanna affect. It can be all of them or use uh, the particular range that you are switching the price. So for example, I'll take these sizes of 14 inches beam and I will just change the price to uh, $50 per hundred weight in that case, save that. And then that will be my new price for any of those sizes now. Uh, another secondary option is you can create forms of the different shapes. And then in these forms, you can put a, a range of sizes. For example, if I go with my plates here, uh, I can just be creating a new set of prices like from plate uh, from 1.8, for example, till plate of 3 16 and then I can, tell, I can tell the system that the price for those uh, sizes is this right here. And then I can go and keep going with the different range, like from uh, one quarter till, for example, let's say five eighths. That can be a different range. And then I can set my new price for those. So you can do things like that. So when a price, a price is updated, you only update one of the prices and then just perform the global edit and it will update all the different prices for the range of sizes in that form. You can also update your prices using the round trip option, uh, but we'll talk more in details later or in a second video about it. Um, the important thing to know about this is that this is the first option that we are using for the pricing in your jobs. If I go, for example, and open a particular estimate in here and go to my beams, uh, this right here, you will see that the price that is actually coming here of $44 per hundred weight for this beam, uh, it's actually, if I double click on it, coming from the warehouse database. And that's because that's my uh, first option to price the materials in any estimate. Uh, you can redirect that to different uh, databases if you are using more than one, as I mentioned, uh, but they will be always be coming from pricing maintenance. Uh, something to have in mind is that you can set a historic date uh, for example, in this job, I can show you that in the suppliers options, I set a historic date. Uh, so if I go to the prices inside of, of that job, you will notice that the changes that I just made are not actually affecting the prices of my beams. So that's something to have in mind. For example, here, I still have the $44 per hundred weight instead of the $50 that I just uh, changed. Uh, if you wanna update this to the new prices, 
you only remove that historic date and open the job again and it will have then the most updated price coming from your database. Now in a, in a second scenario you can also use the job specific price and maintenance. Any price that you set up in here will be actually overriding any price coming from price and maintenance. So that's important to have in mind. Uh, you can add all the sizes for a particular shape or in this example I can add, add all the HSS that I am actually using for this job. So I will just go through use the add sizes from estimate and then I will filter to my HSS and only at, well it's only one so I'll go and also for example all my beams for this job right so I'll include my HSS and my beams and then I will have those prices come in here and I can actually affect the prices in here and I know for certain that it will be actually only using the prices for this job and it will be overriding where it's coming from there so real quick I can just global edit those prices uh, by shape all the HSS I will just go ahead and say those are I don't know 40 two dollars per hundred weight and then I go to my beams and just do the same global edit I will include all of them and I will just set my price to uh, 46 dollars per hundred way and there you go so now all those beams will be using the 46 dollars per hundred way don't worry too much if this don't change immediately when you click in a second piece it will be then, then changing to the 46 dollars or the new price and if you double click on that price you can see that now it's opening the actual uh, job specific price and maintenance for that beam instead of the warehouse database a variation of the job specific price and maintenance or something that actually use the job specific price and maintenance it's the, what we call the round trip pricing uh, for example I can go here to my angles and you can see that now my angles if you look at this portion of the screen it has a price of $45 per hundred weight looks like most of them uh, so what I will do is use uh, send all my angles to a requisition uh, let me just send all of them to this requisition right here and then I can go to that requisition and usually you will probably combine this and then you know send this out for a uh, request for a quote get the prices back either exported and imported from an Excel or a still XML file then once you have those prices back what we want is update those prices into your estimate right so let me use real quick so we see the change reflected uh, change the prices here for the angles so I'll just go ahead with something like $50 per hundred way just to have something different and update this for all of these items and the, the something that is very important for this method is that uh, you can update those prices not only in the estimate but also in your main database so that's something to have in mind I can just here go and update price and maintenance and you can see that it's trying to send those prices to the warehouse by default right you see the current price in the warehouse and the new price uh, that I am sending uh, but in this case in this example I will actually just go with the update estimate a specific pricing and then I go and select my job and update all those prices for this uh, this takes just a couple of seconds then it's done and I can just go back and when I click on those angles now you see that the $50 price per hundred weight it's on them now if you are more like a manual tool guy <laughs> uh, there is also a manual option to update those prices that will override any price either coming from pricing maintenance or from the actual job specific pricing screen and that's the manual cost field in the input fields uh, this field whatever you set in there will be actually overriding in your reports any other price that you may have existing in your databases so you summarizing bad words we have the manual cost that will override any price uh, no matter where it's coming from and then we have the job specific price in maintenance screen that will override any price coming from price in maintenance and then we have the price and maintenance option database right that it, it will be the default price that you will see reflected in your materials and the only variation of that is you can set a historic date in your job so even if you are updating or making changes in your database the price is set to to the actual price that you have back then all right so those are the most common ones uh, those are available for you to, to use in your company you can either use 
one of them or a combination of them in the same job even just have in mind the hierarchy that those price have uh, so even if you are affecting uh, let's say the the price in your database if you have a manual cost set uh, you will not see that price reflected and that can take you to a confusion so as usual if you have any questions about this topic please feel free to contact your help desk area and thank you for watching